So last time in the previous part, we left off by stating this theorem, Rademeister's theorem, which said that given two projections of knots, those two knots are the same if and only if they are linked by a sequence of these planar isotopies and Rademeister moves. So we will, I will describe each of those terms separately. So first we will look at planar isotopy. So what that basically is, is a, a rubber sheet deformation, which basically means that if I draw the, the knot with the marker on a rubber sheet, I can just stretch the rubber sheet in any direction. So I'll just draw an example to make it clear. Like so here is a triple knot. Then what I can do is I can just stretch this portion out like that. Or like this part, I just want to make something there. Or here. And I think you understand the concept. It's very simple. It's not changing the pattern of these crossings, what direction they're coming in, but it's just wiggling the things around. And this is a very basic move. Now, and now we'll see what those randomized moves are there. They actually change the crossing pattern. And so that's why they're. So let's just see what these are. So the first one is, we will denote it as R1. Roman numeral one. So what that is, is if I have a single strand somewhere in my knot, there's a whole knot outside, this is just one little piece I found in here. Then what I can do, can go both directions, is I could basically put a twist in this knot. And I can also twist it the other way, as in over here we have an over strand and then we have an under strand. I can make this into an under strand and an over strand here. So I'll just draw that picture to make it clear. And this double arrow means I can go from here to here and here to here and all, all these things I can do. And this is called all these different types of moves, same class of moves that are called Rademeister 1 moves. Now we'll see what is the next type, Rademeister 2. So in this, the setup is basically we have two strands next to each other in the knot, and there's a whole other knot outside this random part, if I remember. And it's just a small piece of it, which I found. Then this I can what I can do is I can shove a piece of this over the strand and it's a it seems it's very easy and and there's just one more variation to this which is that I can shove it under so the work I'll just draw that. <coughs> just like this. And all these classes of moves are called Rademeister to moves. And now finally we'll go to Rademeister 3 move. It's it has a lot of parts in it, but it's it's very obvious as the other ones are, but it's a little the diagrams are a little bit messy. So I'll just draw it. Try, try to draw it. So the setup for this one is that somewhere on the knot we have a crossing. And then Let's just say for now, underneath that is another strand. And as always, there's a 
whole knot outside of this. This is just one little piece I've zoomed into. Now what I can do to this, actually I'll just change this picture. What I can do to this is I'll take the strand and basically slide it underneath this crossing. So I'll show you the, the new picture will look like this. And this is a very obvious one, just sliding over and uh, sliding under, sorry. And um, there are a lot of variations to this move. For example, as of now, you have an overcrossing and undercrossing like this. You can have switched it and made this an overcrossing, undercrossing. That absolutely does not change anything, but to be absolutely precise, we must consider that case also. And the other case is that this strand might be over this crossing from our perspective instead of under and you can just slide it over. Those are just the two little cases we have to, I'm not going to draw those but you can understand the idea. This is just one example. So these are the three randomized terms and I mean it seems reasonable that any two knots that are the same can be linked to my these sequencing moves. It seems that these encompass most of the sort of transformations we do. To prove this, to prove this though, which Rademeister did, the proof is not exactly hard, but it involves a lot of messy cases, and it's very technical. So I think we will just take this theorem for granted, and we'll move on from there. So, so yeah, so and I'll just say that the theorem is basically stating that the two projections are the same if they are if they are linked to my sequence of planar isotopies, which are those simple transformations and these three moves. Now we will just show a simple example so we can understand how to use these moves. So So this is let me just take the diagram and draw it. So that is one thing which you want to simplify using random master moves. And this is pretty easy. You might want to pause the video and try this out on your own. But I will just show you the solution right now. So in this little region, this looks exactly like a random master one move. So random master one move will just allow us to take this off and just replace it with a simple curve. And now to finish off, we'll need to do some random master two moves. So here what we see is we can just slide this piece underneath. And whenever we slide a piece underneath, that is always a random master two move. So basically what we do is we just slide it underneath. So I'll just remove this. Like that. And similarly here, we can slide this piece underneath. And, and these are just two randomized search moves. Now I'll do some planar isotopy to straighten this out. So, let's see. And this looks just like a triple knot, but deformed in a certain way. And um, now we will continue the next lecture by introducing some definitions that will be useful later, and then going into the concept of links.